Hello. There have been several important developments in the last week that I want to discuss with you in today's vlog. So last Thursday, the Jersey Care Commission published a report about Ofsted's inspection of the island's children's services. Now that report is both challenging, it's, it's also helpful. It describes the significant hurdles we face as we improve the way we work for young people. It also sets out what Ofsted considers the whole government needs to do to put those services in the strongest position for the future. Now, since the inspection in June, we haven't been idle or simply waiting for the report to tell us the way forward. So instead, we've used early feedback to take action over the summer, including the approval of a new improvement plan for children's services. And this plan will accompany essential changes to legislation to ensure it is fit for purpose to meet the needs of children and young people. And last week, we also launched our pledge to Jersey's children and young people, which we're asking all ministers, states members, and executive leaders to sign up to. The pledge is not a knee-jerk reaction to the report, and it is not a substitute either for the full corporate parenting strategy and legislation that we need to do. It is a statement of our commitment to speed up the pace of change for the care and protection of children in Jersey, and it is an acknowledgement that children are the responsibility of us all. As a government, as a state's assembly as an, and as an island, our children must always be at the forefront of our minds. And the protection of children is integral to the work we are doing in developing a common strategic policy, sometimes referred to as a CSP, which we're going to be lodging into the assembly in October. And I'll be to dedicating a full vlog to the CSP sometime in the next three weeks. Important progress also took place this week in our preparations for Brexit. Islanders have been writing to me asking about our planning in the event of a no-deal Brexit in March 2019, which still remains a possibility. I want to reassure you that Brexit contingency planning is taking place across government to ensure we have access to the supplies and services we need in the event of a no-deal. Now, Yesterday we published the latest in a series of responses to the UK's technical notices on no-deal Brexit, including matters like data protection and telecoms. Now, there are also important changes to the duration of passport validity when travelling in parts of Europe. And what you can do is you can use a very useful calculator we produce on gov.je to make sure your passport will still be valid for travel after Brexit Day. And the Minister for Infrastructure has also announced that he'll be lodging a proposition to ensure that we comply with the UN Vienna Convention on Road Traffic. And that will require some changes for our motorists including regular technical inspections of vehicles and using international driving permits when travelling. But the point is, in the event of a no-deal Brexit, if we do not comply with the Convention, there's a very real risk that Jersey cars will not be able to drive on the continent after the 29th of March. So, while the preparation for Brexit has been the catalyst for this legislation, it will also make cars actually in Jersey safer and more environmentally friendly. It is already illegal to drive defective vehicles in Jersey, but this law will provide a structured system for checking all of our vehicles, whether or not they're being driven in the European Union. Now, I was also glad to be back in the State's Assembly for the post, uh, first post-summer sitting on Tuesday, and that sitting saw the successful passage of legislation introducing limited liability companies, LLCs, led by the Assistant Chief Minister Richard Buchanan. This adds another important tool to the island's financial services offering, which is especially attractive to US investors. It also continues our reputation of providing world-leading services, combined with robust regulation. On a completely different note, yesterday, hopefully like many of you, I enjoyed the 2018 International Air Display. And it was a beautiful day, and a delight to see the Red Arrows back in Jersey, especially as they've been awarded the Bale of Silver Medal for 50 appearances over the island, at a function of Government House, which I attended on Wednesday night. Most importantly, uh, the origins of the international air display in the Battle of Britain reinforced me the skill, service and dedication of those men and women who gave their lives to ensure our freedom today. And on a much uh, lighter note, I'd like to express my sincere fat thanks to the people who showed me around the static display. I hugely appreciated being able to see those unique visiting aircraft up close. Next week is the annual Enterprise Week led by Jersey Business. I look forward to addressing business leaders on Tuesday on the economic challenges we face 
and what government and industry can do to lead to greater growth and productivity. And I hope to speak to more about that in next week's vlog. On a final note, this week saw the bailiff, Sir William Barge, announce his forthcoming retirement. I am very grateful to Sir William for what will be 20 years of service on behalf of the public of this island as Crown Advocate, Attorney General, Deputy Bailiff and Bailiff, and I'd like to wish him the very best for his retirement next year. And in my opinion, the role of the Bailiff is integral to the State's Assembly and part of our unique island identity. We will miss his thoughtful counsel in the Assembly and look forward to his remaining time in office. I look, speaking, look forward to speaking to you again soon. Thank you.